Hey, what's up internet? Victor with Phone Arena here and today we'll talk about the phones that were supposed to be the future, the super phones as they were announced and we'll get to hear about the next big thing, the, the next major new revolution in the smartphone industry which often doesn't turn out to be much of a revolution at all. So which were those phones that manufacturers promised will be big big new announcements but yet they turned out to be fairly disappointing? Let's find out. The biggest disappointment of 2014? The Amazon Fire Phone, a brainchild of none other than Amazon founder Jeff Bezos himself. A massive effort that took some three years in research and development, the Fire Phone touted the idea of an effortless 3D interface that was supposed to look cool but ended up being perceived as a useless gimmick with a heavy Amazon skin that limited Android functionality. Now skipping over to 2013, we have the Ubuntu Edge. The Ubuntu Edge announced itself as a geek dream of a device, a phone with top-notch hardware and the possibility to juggle between two operating systems, Android and Ubuntu, for a complete experience. Mark Shuttleworth, the, bil the billionaire behind the Ubuntu Linux distribution, stood behind the project, but despite all of the coverage, the Ubuntu Edge could not attract even half of the $32 million funding it needed in an Indiegogo campaign campaign and it ended up being not released and an utter failure. In the year 2012 we had the LG Optimus View. Now, sometimes companies rush to be the first one and take particular pride in achieving this status. Samsung for instance was first with phablets. LG however did not seem to be happy with its follower situation and decided to also pull off an exclusive and a first with a device unlike any others, the LG Optimus View. A big screen phone, the view comes with a 4x3 aspect ratio making it a huge and most importantly extremely wide brick of a phone that doesn't fit in pockets well and is a pain to use with a single hand. Naturally, while it has some popularity in Korea, it failed to get traction in the western world and was scrapped. In the year 2011 we had the HP Veer. Palm Spree was not the market success that Palm expected and the troubled situation of the company forced it to go into the not so friendly arms of Hewlett Packard. That's where former Apple executive turned Palm mastermind John Rubenstein conceived the HP Veer, an extremely awkward phone that bucked the trend of large screens and came with a claustrophobically small 2.6 inch display. Moreover, the HP Veer was announced before the HP Pre 3 and in a strange turn of events, rather than focusing on its flagship phone, HP pulled this weird miniature phone out. And along with the HP touchpad, both turned out to be an utter failure. In the year 2010, all the negative talk was around the Microsoft Kin. Microsoft is no stranger to failure in recent years after some huge write-offs. What write-offs don't account for though is time and in terms of waste wasted precious time, the Microsoft Kin is probably the most notable example of an overly hyped device that turned out to be a spectacular failure. The glorified feature phones with a pop-up physical keyboard that were supposed to allure the youth ended up being a 240 million write-off. Yes, we're talking about the kin. The bigger issue however with the kin was that Microsoft was focused on these short-lived devices when Apple and Google were setting the foundations of their iOS and Android ecosystems and Microsoft just missed that train completely. Now in 2009 the biggest failure was the Palm Pre. Now it's a bittersweet symphony because we loved the Palm Pre for some reasons and especially for its software but in terms of market success, it was an utter failure. Now, its card-based interface lays, laid the foundation for modern design languages, especially the card menus in Android, for instance, and its gestures were ingenious. Yet, the phone was slow, it didn't work well, it was underpowered, and it, its marketing was a disaster. So, that's the phone we outline as a failure of 2009. And switching 
earlier back in time to 2008 we have the blackberry storm blackberry was another seemingly bulletproof company riding sky high market caps in a market of blackberry addicts nothing less the company that was considered the king of email seemed to detect the danger coming from the iphone earlier than some others and quickly came up with a seemingly a solution a device that was supposed to compete on apple-esque terms an all-touch interface and a new user interface but blackberry used a weird sure press technology that complicated the experience and blackberry os 5 on the blackberry storm was not a pretty sight nor was it particularly fast and ultimately that made the blackberry storm an utter failure and since we're talking about the iPhone as a successful device that disrupted the industry, we have to go back even further back in time to 2005 and show you that Apple also did fail pretty spectacularly with its first supposed iPhone for the first Apple phone, which actually released under the Motorola brand in a collaboration with Apple, the Motorola Rocker E1. Now, the E1 was... Uh, the idea of the E1 was to give you quick access to iTunes and mu music but with limited storage and lack of functionality this feature phone ended up being an utter failure. Luckily it didn't last too long. So these are the worst devices, the utter failures that we saw in recent years. Which one do you think disappointed you the most and which one of these you remember? Which one of these have you used? Let us know in the comments below and as always thanks for watching.